Hello there everybody, I'm Jorge Varela for the Buttonsmashers.com and here's our video review of Toho Genso Rondo Bullet Ballet for PlayStation 4. So, the short compressed version of this review goes like this. It's not good, unfortunately. It's an interesting idea that's executed pretty poorly. Turning bullet hell shooters into a fighting game is a pretty cool thing to think about, but it ended up being a boring, overly complicated chore that got old very quickly. The music could be better, the story is mediocre at best, the art is average, and the amount of content available does not justify the $30 price points. I've seen way better Toho games than this, and this is definitely not the best place to start. You'd be better off not bothering with this one and just waiting for something better to show up. So, if you want to stick around and hear more, then here's the long version of the review, which goes like this. The Toho Project franchise is a series of bullet hell shooters that are incredibly big in Japan, representing an enormous amount of the country's independent work in terms of manga, visual novels, animations, video games, and a heck of a lot more. However, if you ask an American what Toho is, they probably have no idea, even though they most likely come across a bunch of pictures and animations and stuff featuring all of the property's characters on the internet. Because it is very deeply rooted in Japan, it could almost be considered a historical event to finally see a game featuring this property making it into home consoles for the very first time in the Western market. Unfortunately, this newest game is a pretty strange spin-off and does more to dishearten and leave a bad first impression rather than excite people on Toho's arrival to consoles. Toho Genso Rondo Bullet Ballet is a mouthful of a title that features the more prominent and popular characters in the Toho franchise, in which they are pitted against each other in a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. However, this is not the typical 2D side-scrolling fighting style like Street Fighter or an Arc System Works kind of game. Instead, the game allows you to fight through shooting bullets, therefore creating a bullet hell of your own, in which both you and your opponent need to dodge, bob, and weave your way to victory in the hopes that the opposition gets hit more times than you do. Conceptually, I like this idea a lot. As a fan of bullet hell shooters, I think it is an interesting and original take to be playing the role of the one shooting the bullets, in which others need to be dodging your attacks. It is also really cool that different patterns and attacks are seen from combining different button presses, such as melee, or combining a guard with a light attack, or combining a guard with a heavy attack, or dashing and doing a medium move, or a light move, or a heavy move, and having spells to play around with. And, you know, that kind of creates a fun way to experiment and mind trick your opponent. In addition to that, all of the characters are fairly unique with their own attack patterns and quirks that make playing all of them very fun. Unfortunately, that level of interest only lasted for about an hour before I started to get really bored and desire more out of it. So I decided to check out the story mode. Big mistake, by the way. The word that comes to mind whenever I think about the story mode is whatever. This is the most whatever story I have ever seen. Aside from the fact that the illustrations look pretty rough and inconsistent to the rest of the game, the individual character stories are so forgettable and pointless that it makes Seinfeld, the famous show about nothing, look like Shakespeare by comparison. Basically, most of the story is focused on shrine maidens, whose power is measured through the amount of incidents resolved and the faith that their respective shrines receive. There are also other species of people like vampires and magicians, because apparently that's the species. And so, yeah, those kinds of people are involved, but it pretty much boils down to cute anime girls with different bullet colors and patterns. Most of the time, it will be very simple things, like girls wanting to be stronger than someone else, trying to come up with new ideas for puppet shows, or simply going out to get more people to visit their shrine. Pretty much all of these stories resolve in a very abrupt and dry way, where either nothing really happens, it was all just a dream, or a misunderstanding, or whatever. My experience felt more akin to a bad filler episode in an anime than anything else. Of course, in between these dialogue scenes, you get to fight all the girls, which was a pretty easy feat, since everyone is always shooting bullets all over the place to the point where you don't even have to think too much about what you're doing. Sure, you can go through the most boring tutorial in the world to teach you about grazing, meters, range, spells, and a whole bunch of other stuff, but I was perfectly capable of beating everybody by just dodging bullets and repeating the same two or three patterns until the opponent fell over. Everything felt very mindless and slow, to the point where I was actively trying to play with complexity and nuance, like legitimately actually trying to work with all the systems and be different, but it didn't really feel all that different at all. Speaking of things that feel the same, all of the different modes available in the game might as well just be one mode, with the option of turning the story scenes on or off. All the modes are exactly the same type of fight, which get boring very quickly. I've said in previous reviews before that fighting games these days should have more modes than just the bare minimum versus and online modes. This is especially said for indie titles, where at least then they are not hamstrung by whatever a focus-tested flowchart says and have more freedom to be creative. But instead we get something like Bullet Ballet, which contains only one idea that is not fully realized, 
to the point where not even its soundtrack can save it. Speaking of which, during my research into Toho Project, it just so happens that fans really seem to like the music for these games quite a lot, and the same applies to this newest title. Unfortunately, in my experience, I had a lot of trouble remembering any song from the game. After searching for some of the songs on the internet, I thought they were quite decent, but for some reason I have trouble thinking about them in relation to the gameplay. By themselves, they're alright, but I thought the general sound of the game was very forgettable at the time that I was playing. But in the end, Toho Genso Rondo Bullet Ballet feels more like a $15 Steam Early Access game than a $30 PlayStation 4 game. The idea is there, but it is not fleshed out enough to be interesting or fun for more than an hour. The sheer lack of content, the mediocre story, the sleep-inducing tutorial, and a mindless gameplay makes for a very tough sell. If you are in any way interested in the Toho franchise, then I highly suggest that you go back and play the older Bullet Hell shooters instead, rather than bothering with this strange and dull spin-off that doesn't properly represent why so many people like this property so much to begin with. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a like. And of course, you can go to our website, thebuttonsmasher.com. We do news, we do reviews, and if you're a fan of podcasts, then be sure to visit that site because we have a lot of them. All of that content is created by really fun people that love what they do, so we highly appreciate your support.